Hi friends, welcome to Nessa's Nook. So today I want to go ahead and try something. I've made my own crust before, but I don't know if it's necessarily what I liked. Um, so what I wanted to do from the pizzas I had made over the last couple days <clears throat> is I had to buy, I had to use my store-bought crust that I had here at home. Well, that was the last one I had, so now I have to either buy more or I have to make my more more. And I thought to myself, I said, you know how much easier that would have been if like Friday night I could have just took that out of the, out of the freezer, threw it in the refrigerator, cooked it in a cast iron pan, and it would be a done deal. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. So I'm going to double my batch. And um, I was talking to Melanie over at A Godly Home again because she's just so smart when it comes to this stuff. She makes so much stuff homemade. Check out her channel if you haven't already done it. But anyways, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, put in what is asked for, but I'm going to leave the last cup of flour out because I don't know for sure if anybody that's made the breads or anything like that, there's sometimes you need the extra flour, there's sometimes you just need a little bit extra flour, there's sometimes you don't need the extra flour at all. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump in. I have um, all my stuff laid out here. I just have to combine it in my um, KitchenAid over here. I don't hand mix that stuff because my wrist just, I just, I can't. So um, I'll go ahead and get this started and uh, bring this over here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, what I'm going to do is throw in the two cups of warm water. It's about what would be about... Um, it would be about uh, about 110 degrees, and then I need a tablespoon. It'd be two tablespoons of olive oil. So it's one for each batch. It was one glass of water, one cup of water for each batch, and then I need a teaspoon of sugar. So I'm going to need to do two. And then I need to do a teaspoon each for the salt. All right. And then I need to do two and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. I just took this out of the freezer. So I'll be doing five of these. Two. Three, four, five. Okay. Sorry, I took off my glasses. My writing is really small on this paper. I should usually blow it up, and I didn't do that this time. Right. There's just a little bit of olive oil left in there. So I am going to go ahead and start with, um, I'm going to use bread flour this time. And... I have regular flour too, but I wanted to try it with a bread flour because I have bread flour and I hardly ever use it for things and I don't want it to go old. So I'm going to go ahead and do the four cups. I'm going to start to get this mixed and find out if I'm going to need the fifth one or not. There's four. All right. I have my um, dough hook on here. Go ahead and raise this up. And of course, never start off with that going crazy in there. Let me put that up so you can maybe see in there better. Because you will have flour or whatever all over everywhere. And what you're going to want to let this do is you're going to want to let this go for probably a good five minutes after it's mixed. <clears throat> you may have to stop it every so often to get the um, to get the flour off the sides. And, of course, I won't know if it's going to need more uh, flour or not. You know, it's better to go with less than trying to um, mess with your recipe and things don't turn out because you had too much. I don't know for sure if you could see that in there. It's 
I mean, it's starting to pull pretty good from the sides. So I'm thinking that's not going to need that extra cup. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and let this go for the five minutes or so and get that all needed and I will be right back. Now I did have to add an extra half a cup to this so now I'm going to go ahead and start the five minutes now. Alright, that mixed up and it's a little bit sticky but it, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, put a little bit of oil in this pan to kind of get this ready to be the dough to rise here. Of course, make sure you have clean hands, which I do. But you can see how that took all that stuff off the side. All right. This is all really nice and coated. So what I'm going to do is going to put a towel over this. I'm going to let this set till this is at least double the size. And then I'll be back. All right, friends. Let's see what happened here. Go ahead and bring it down here. Ready? Ta-da! So my yeast must be good. So my hands are clean. So you go ahead and press this down. And what I'll be doing, because thankfully Melanie's so nice to me, and she helps me through these dilemmas that I have. Because what I want to try to do is to have a 12-inch pizza cooked in like a cast iron pan because that's the size my cast iron is but mark likes thin pizza so what she suggested was to pretty much break this in thirds so let me get my little cutter thingy there and you know what hold on let me get my scale out a scale would be very helpful here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and kind of like cut this and see how close I am. That's 13.7. See what this one is. 13.7. Wow, you think I've done this before. And that's about 14.6. So just a little bit more to each one. And they all should probably weigh the same now. 13.2, 14.7. So I'm going to just go ahead and take half of what I did on each of them. And that should be better. 14.1. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. 14.2. 14.2. So, there, friends. Look at that. Didn't even really plan to do it that good, but hey, it works. So, what I'm going to be doing is one of these are going to be left out tonight for dinner. And what I'm doing is just kind of like making this kind of like going to be like in a circle. And this is going to be one that will be staying out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the other two. All right, and what's going to happen is these other two are going to be put in a freezer, in the freezer. So let me... Pull out my plastic wrap. I'm really kind of shocked that that uh, all came out about the same weight, honestly. I'm not a big fan of um, cling wrap, but it makes sense why you use it. 
on this. So what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and cling wrap this. And what's going to happen is I'm going to be putting, like I said, two of these back in the freezer. And what I'm going to do is I'll have a, a gallon bag that I will just keep these pizza crusts in. And what I'll do is I'll put today's date on here, as soon as I'm done here. And um, today is the uh, the 18th, I believe. You're going to see this probably not the same day, obviously. Um, This way, if I do make more ever, and I store them in there, I can make sure that, let me bring this over here, it's a little bit easier to see. So this one, I'll be putting in a container, and um, that will start at second rise. So what's gonna happen with this one, is I'll be putting it in the gallon bag, And this is why you put the strand wrap around it. Still try to take out as much air as you can. And I'll write on here pizza crust. All right, and so these two will go in the freezer and then you'll see this other one being made into a pizza. So I think that worked out incredibly well. Um, thank you again, Melanie. I mean, your friendship has been absolutely wonderful. I mean, I could not ask for any better of a friend. And to be able to help me on things like this that, you know, I've done things by hand for years, but I've not done things by hand for years, if that makes any sense. I mean, there's certain things that I just don't know anything about. And there's certain things that I know a lot of things about. Well, pizza crust is not one of them. But I do want to be able to make it myself because for starters, it's a lot cheaper. Because you figure um, those pizzas that I made this weekend, that was over $4 for just the two crusts. Now that's not talking my time, the electricity, it's not talking anything like that. So I was watching um, the Provident Prepper, and Jonathan's so good at numbers. And he was saying that if you have so many, if you buy like the 25 pound bag of flour per year, and you know, it costs so much money for yeast, it costs so much money for oil and stuff. But he was saying pretty much just the crust itself is about $20 a year. It was maybe a little bit less than that. You'd have to watch the video. But I'm like, wow, okay. So you figure that was one pizza a week for a year for less than 20 bucks. Now, obviously, you know, the real cost comes in, the sauce, the cheese, the toppings. Um, not everybody wants a whole bunch of stuff on their pizzas, and that's fine. And, you know, that's that's what people like and what they don't like, so that works. But, I mean, you figure I would buy not even three of those two packs for that. Now, what they did is they also had like a prices of some stuff there at Walmart and it was like a couple hundred dollars a year just on one pizza per per week for, I mean, not that we have one pizza a week. I mean, yeah, we've been having a lot of pizzas. We're having another one tonight, but you know, that's all one of my subscribers fault because she suggested something and I ran it past my husband and he says, yes, please. So I said, well, we did have just pizza this weekend. And he goes, I know, but that sounds really good. So that's what it's going to be. But, I mean, it's really nice when you can um, save money where you can, have things taste as the freshest, that you don't have to worry about it being expired. I mean, obviously, you're probably going to want to use these within probably two or three months, I would probably say. These are not going to last two or three months. I mean, we usually have a pizza. 
maybe once a week, every couple weeks or something like that. So there's so many different pizzas I still want to try, but I don't like going and buying the crust and I don't always like having the time to um, make my own. But if I have this, and I know I could just take this right out of the freezer, throw that in my refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? It's a done deal. And, you know, if you, I mean, I could even see myself honestly making a couple more of those just to have on hand because I think it's going to work very well. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, obviously I'm going to wait till I do my pizza crust tonight. Um, but I don't see why it would not. So look forward to seeing, um, Maybe I might do the the same video, uh, bump some things around. Because you guys do know, I don't, it's not always the same day that I make my videos is when you guys see them. Because I was putting everything out on one day. But like, sometimes we have leftovers. <laughs> and sometimes I'm just like, I am not feeling like being in front of a camera. I don't feel like making a video. There's nothing I can even think of to even make a video on. And that's when it's nice that I have these backed up that I can use this on. So I will try very hard. Um, I think that's what I think I'll do. I'll do both videos on the same day just so you guys can see. So you're not questioning like where the crust come from. <laughs> Not that I would ever do that. So anyways, um, let me know if you've ever done this yourself before and if it worked out for you. Um, how long has your um, crust lasted for you? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for stopping by. You have a very blessed and wonderful day.